If you are able, would you stand for our call to worship? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Would you join me in Psalm 63? God of Zion, to you even silence is praise. You listen to prayer and all living things come to you. When wrongdoings become too much for me, you forget our sins. How happy is the one you choose to bring close, the one who lives in your courtyards. In righteousness you answer us by your awesome deeds, God of our salvation. You establish the mountains by your strength. You are dressed in raw power. Those who dwell on the far edges stand in awe of your acts. You visit the earth and make it abundant, enriching it greatly. Drenching the earth's furrows, leveling its ridges, you soften it with rain showers, you bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness, your paths overflow with rich flow. Even the desert pastures drip with it, and the hills are dressed in pure joy. The meadowlands are covered with flocks, the valleys stretch out in rain, they shout for joy. Uh, Deuteronomy 8, 7 through 18. For the Lord your God is bringing you into the good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters, welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by falling to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery who led you through the great and terrible wilderness and arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know to humble you and to test you and in the end to do your good or to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. It is Luke 17, 11 through 19. See it. 
On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Many, many times through the scriptures, the words thanks is used. Give thanks in everything, Paul exhorts us. Give thanks to his name, the writer of Hebrews exclaims. We give thanks for you. Let no filthy talk come out of your mouth, but rather give thanks. You begin to think there might be a little hint of something and maybe something we should learn when something is repeated that often. And no doubt that's true. First Thessalonians says, give thanks in all circumstances for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So if you wonder what God's will is for your life, it is to give thanks. Do you realize that the will of God is to continually every moment without ceasing to have a life of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not one day on the calendar where we stuff our faces and sit back for a brief moment to reminisce about how good we've got it. Thanksgiving should be a lifestyle. When you look back, if you look at your life, if you took all the complaining and frustration and anxiety and problems and issues and circumstances and griping and distrust and confusion and criticizing and grumbling, yeah, how's that for a list? <laughs> if all of those things were swallowed up by thanksgiving, how different our lives would be. several places in the Bible it talks about the fragrance of our offerings rising to God. I suspect that many of us are more of a stench to God because of our complaining, frustration, anxiety, issues, problems, all of that list we just went through, rather than smelling of the perfume of the Christ. Believe it or not, even as a pastor, I find people who are, woe is me. Can you believe that so-and-so did such and such? Or can you believe, I really hate it when that person does this or that. Yep. <laughs> You're the one I'm talking to then, Martha. <laughs> that kind of a life is not only polluting to us, but to all those around us. It produces death, in fact, to the people around us. But the life of the Christian is about one single thing, Jesus. If we truly grappled with a full understanding of what it means to have Jesus in our lives, how could we do anything but praise and give thanks? Maybe that's one of the reasons, Lil, that I managed to at least put on a smile for the service. <laughs> I enjoy what I'm doing, and I have a good time doing it. Almost always. <laughs> As Paul declares again in 1 Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. It's no news to anyone here that not every day is perfect. Probably a safer guess that no day is perfect, 
but I heard an interesting thing, and I don't think I have shared it with this group. But imagine that if you had about $85,000 in a savings account, and you realized that the bank had cheated you out of $10. Okay? Got the proportions here? Would you just ignore that bank, cut up your bank book, and never go to that bank again? And ignore the other 84000 some odd dollars over that $10? Probably not. Most of us would go back for the rest of our money. We might pull it all out and move it somewhere else. The thought is, and my math isn't good enough to do this quickly in my head, but there's 84,000 some odd seconds in a day. If someone blows 10 seconds of your time or says something that hurts your feelings or makes you feel bad, are you going to throw away the other 84,000 seconds? Is it really worth it? Or can you put the smile back on and go withdraw your money and go have a good time anyway? I don't mean that we should ignore everybody who comes to us with a complaint or problem, because often they're right. But don't let it ruin your day. We've got a lot better things to do than to sit and mope. Perhaps the problem is not seeing life as God sees it. Perhaps all we can see is that tree that's in our way and not the beauty of the forest that's around us. Different forest, by the way. Yeah, just, just, just to be clear. Romans 8 says that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. How many things work together for good? All. All things. We often forget that. Sometimes because of our first world problems, like we were seeing red in that little clip at the beginning, what we think is a huge issue would not even be a problem in so many of those areas. Sometimes we go through tragic experiences or something just seems terribly destructive to us. And yes, even God can use that for his own glory. In such a light, can we keep from living a life of thanksgiving, knowing that whatever we're going through right now will be taken care of. One of the worship songs says, You give and take away, yet my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. How often when things are tough do we bless God? That's a tough habit to get into, but it's a good one. I hope that we can begin to follow that perspective in every situation so that we too can declare in the good or the bad times, Lord, blessed be your name. Penny, your comment just before the service rings right in there. We were talking about how dad was doing and that things were not looking good. And I said, I really think he's ready to give up. I think he's tired. And I think things are gradually shutting down. And Penny said something to the effect of, we've been fortunate to have him for a good long time. The average life expectancy passed, or he passed that 20 some years ago. And it is very blessed. And he knows it. And he's ready. He is not afraid. I want to share with you something that I didn't know. One of the many things I didn't know, but something I learned today. How's that? That sounded terribly arrogant, and I didn't mean it that way. The word thanks used in the New Testament is the same root word we get Eucharist from. Our communion is thanks. Same root word for Lord's Supper or communion. So when we come to take communion tonight and we come to the Lord's table, I ask that tonight it might be a time of pure thanksgiving. It's a time to give thanks for the greatest gift and the sacrifice ever made, the death and life 
of Jesus on our behalf. Luke 22 is the story of the Last Supper where Jesus broke bread and shared wine with his disciples before his crucifixion. Several times throughout that passage, it reads, and he gave thanks. He made Eucharist as the symbolic body and blood of Christ was passed. Thanksgiving is not about a table with a turkey and dressing. Thanksgiving is about a table with bread and the fruit of the vine, a symbolic feasting on our Lord's body and blood. This is the picture of the gospel, an exchange of lives. Ever thought of it that way? The whole message of the gospel is an exchange of lives. We partake in Christ's body and blood in the action of communion. We talk about Christ in us, Christ in the hope of glory. But he also partakes of our lives. In the act of communion, we are declaring that Christ is in us, that he, we receive his sacrifice of a broken body and poured out blood, but we are also declaring that our lives are at his disposal to do with what he sees fit. And here is where communion becomes more than a ritual. Because if we're taking it seriously, we are offering ourselves to God for him to break our body or spill our blood if it will bring glory and honor to his name. That takes it from a simple ritual into an eye-opening aha moment. This Thanksgiving, I hope that we will not get stuck in the reminiscing and maybe instead get into a little bit of the depths of thanksgiving or communion with our Savior. May your every moment this Thanksgiving season be overflowing with grace and glory, goodness, and the grandeur of Jesus. May he capture and ravish your heart with his person. May your life take on the fragrance of his nature in an attitude of constant thanksgiving. And I pray for you that your day will be brimming with praise and adoration for the love and sacrifice poured out upon the cross on your behalf. Not just a happy Thanksgiving, but every day. As we move to that service of communion, I have a few things that I opted not to print for you, so I will be encouraging you to kind of repeat back to me as I phrase it out to you. Today, we come to this table with thankful hearts, and I would ask you to ask, why do we give thanks at this table? Why do we give thanks at this table? That was pretty good. We give thanks because God has invited us here. All God's children are invited to the Lord's Supper. We come humbly to the table knowing that we have not earned our way here, but we are invited as guests at a feast of love. You might ask, why do we eat at this table? Why do we eat at this table? Hey, we're getting good at this. We eat at this table to remember that on the night before Jesus died, he ate with his friends, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Each time you do this, remember me. Would you pray with me? God of grace, give us repentant hearts, forgiving hearts, clean hearts, with thanksgiving, we come to your table. Send your spirit upon us so that we know that all who eat and drink in this room and around the world are one body, 
one holy people, giving thanks to you in an endless song of praise. If you would repeat this line after me, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And again, who gave your life freely for our salvation? Who gave your life freely for our salvation? We take the cup tonight with thankful hearts. And you might ask, why do we take the cup at this table? We drink because that same night Jesus also took a cup. And after giving thanks, he passed it to his friends, saying, drink this cup. This cup poured out for you is the promise of God. Whenever you drink it, remember me. And would you respond, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Who gave your life freely for our salvation. Our presence at this table is a sign. Here we remember the gift that is Jesus, the gift of his birth, his life, and his death on a cross. At this table, we celebrate Christ's resurrection. We remember that we are waiting in hope to see Jesus again. Jesus took the bread that would have been on the table for that Passover meal. And I remind you, I encourage you, I challenge you, at Thanksgiving, whatever bread you may have on the table, break it and remember our Lord. After the meal, he took the cup. And I again challenge you to put a, a glass of wine through the vine juice your preference on the table that day. And as you share it, remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for inviting us to this banquet. Help us to remember the gift we have received and to live thankful lives as brothers and sisters, members of one family. All praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. Let us. As we pray this, we recall the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you receive our benediction? Our Heavenly Father, we ask that we may go in peace, go into your world, go into a world with thanksgiving, setting the example by our attitude, our words, and our actions that we are your people, that we love you, and that we recognize where all good gifts come from. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.